first one to comment about Wednesday. The lab that we're going to do on Wednesday, I was thinking about pushing that off another week, but you have the test on that day, and I don't want to push it off two weeks. So the lab on Wednesday, we're still going to do on Wednesday. It's not, it wouldn't be due the following week anyway, because there's a test that would be due two weeks from this coming Wednesday, which I believe this slide, uh, the 13th, I believe. I understand you're going to be doing the data collection, and then we will be covering the material. So the material, we, we haven't gotten to the material yet that is really required to do the analysis. So Wednesday, we will still do the Newton Second Law Lab. Just you'll do the data collection, don't lose it, or somebody in the group hopefully will not lose it. And then by the time, yeah, because we'll have Monday, Friday, and the following Monday, yeah, we'll, we'll get to the point where you can do the analysis. It should be well in advance of when the lab is actually due. So if that's any questions on that. Do you have to do the pre-lab? Uh, pre-lab can wait. Yeah, the pre-lab requires stuff that we haven't covered yet. Thank you. Any other questions at the moment? All right, so what I've written on the board are a couple, first off, some general rules of thumb dealing with forces, since that's the next chapter. Forces require two objects. They always come in pairs. Each force in that pair will act on a different object, and since there are two objects involved, one will act on, one of the forces will act on each object. The forces will act in opposite directions. It's the same kind of force as the other, so when I, they come in pairs, if I have a gravitational force, that means there's gonna be two gravitational forces. There'll be two normal forces, there'll be two tensions, and so forth. And the two forces in that pair each has the same magnitude. Now the way I generally approach this for the next several chapters is there's a process. If you've had physics before and you might know some shortcuts, I'm gonna try not to do the shortcuts as we go through the process. And I basically eventually came out with this checklist here called facades, where first thing you do when you're faced with one of the problems, the, you'll do a force diagram and we'll spend quite a bit of time on that one. Uh, You'll determine the direction of acceleration. You'll come up with a coordinate axis or a coordinate system. You'll decompose, you'll break up any vectors that you need to. Come up with the equations of motion. And this equations of motion is not directly related to the stuff we've done in chapter two and three. It's still called equations of motion, even if it's not moving. But this is the basis of equations of motion is this equation right here. The first physics equation we're actually dealing with. And then substitution followed by a solution. So this is the process that we're going to go through. Before we do a force diagram, we have to sort of understand what kind of forces are working with here. And that's the point of this over here, F tongue. So you'll be given a problem, you'll do, you'll do a force diagram, and so that's what we're going to be leading into. Is there a part that you can't read? No, I'm okay. You have to look up glare on the board. Yeah, it happens. Now, the five forces that we'll be working with for quite a bit, friction, tension, normal, gravitational, and this other category called other, one, I need to devout, and two, there are sometimes there's, in a problem, you'll be given a five Newton force that's pushing on a box. Well, what's causing that five Newton force? I don't know. So that's an example of other. It's usually problem specific, or in some cases, other is an example of where we really don't care what the source is. We know what it is, but we it's irrelevant. So I'm pushing on a box with the five newtons of force. The fact that I'm doing it is not necessarily relevant to the problem. So that could be an example of other. So it's just sort of start going through this. I, I first start out and I, I sort of lay out these are the forces we're gonna deal with. And then I go into force diagrams starting with the simple simplicity of box falling all the way to a test level problem 
which is something like get bowling boy on sweat. So we got a couple minutes here. So let's do it. Friction. The requirement for friction is there's contact. The objects have to touch for there to be friction. And there also must be desired relative motion. The desired piece of it comes that objects don't actually have to slide in order for there to be friction. I can push on this table right here. The table's not moving, but it, frictions keep it in place. So if the floor were frictionless, this thing would move. That's the desired bit. Relative is desired motion relative to whatever an object is touching. For example, If this were frictionless, when I move the notebook that way, this box will fall. But the box isn't falling because of friction. There's desire that desires to stay where it was, but it is not. And so there's desired motion relative to what it is touching. Tension, the requirement is you have a taut rope, chain, whatever it happens to be pulling. Now some say that tension doesn't really exist, that it's actually, uh, it, it's the force that shows our ignorance of how things are actually connected, and I'll agree with that. So if I pull on this table, yeah, you know, I'm pulling on the table because of friction, yeah, primarily friction there, because the table frictionless, my hand would slip. But I'm also pulling on it, I could just have lumped it under a category of, it really doesn't matter how my hand is touching it, because if I'm touching the leg, that's a different force that's pulling on it. And so, in such cases, I can just call it tension. There's some tension pulling on it. Other, this is problem specific, so, uh, the requirement is, force with unknown or irrelevant source. And I don't know if I spelled irrelevant correctly or not. Uh, you spelled it right. I did? Okay. I think Todd spelled it right. Isn't there like a G-H in Todd? In which one? Like Todd rope or chain. I don't Isn't think so. Right? That's the G-H is the educational Todd. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. Sometimes I am. <laughs> Normal force requires contact. And gravitational force requires two masses. Specifically, we have two types of gravitational force. This F sub G is a generalized gravitational force. And so if, when we get to outer space, F sub G is what we'd be dealing with. W is more specific. This is weight. I have had some students feel that weight and gravitational force are two different things. They're not. Weight is a specific case of gravitational force. And it requires two masses, but it also requires, of the two masses, one huge, one small, I'll put huge in quotation marks and small in quotation marks. Elephant would be considered small on the scale. And they are near each other. So there's not a weight of the elephant because of the Earth if the elephant is on the moon. But there is a, we each have weight because we are a small object near a huge object, and huge being sort of planet or moon size. And this right here will be sort of the cliffhanger to keep you all excited about physics on Monday. Always the cliffhanger. You guys aren't excited about physics every day? <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> Even if I didn't end on the cliffhanger, I guess the question in your mind is, what is he going to do next? <laughs> the worm? 
I'm just still imagining how much I'd hurt myself if I did that. 